Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Remember to vote in the poll in the top right corner of the video, and like and subscribe for more emotionally available paramours next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Tifa Lockhart from Final Fantasy VII. She's a working class gal who cares about protecting the environment and taking down greedy corporations. Basically, she's AOC, if AOC could suplex a Gundam. To be fair, I've never seen her attempt it. Sometimes you wanna go where everybody knows your name. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need to punch, but punch good enough to punch through steel. Next, we gotta be mobile. Big jumps, big zooms, big wall jumps. Finally, we'll get a suplex to pin down Shinra soldiers so the rest of the party can deal some major damage. For stats, we're gonna be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just make sure your dexterity and your wisdom are high enough. We're actually gonna kick this off with strength. You're incredibly quick, sure, but there's an amount of raw power behind your hits that can't be explained by finesse. Dexterity next, you're incredibly tough, sure, but there's an amount of finesse that can't be explained by raw power. Wisdom after that, you've gotta be able to read people tending bar, a depressing amount of people will use you as a therapist. Follow that up with charisma, again, you're gonna be talking to a lot of people at a bar. Constitution is on the lower end, Tifa is one of the frailer party members, but we're gonna dump intelligence, not because she's dumb, we just don't really need it. Tifa is a human, but if you don't like humans, a Tifa dwarf would be pretty great, either getting extra health or extra strength. But varying humans get a feat, the grappler feat will let you chill cold your enemies, giving you advantage on attack rolls against creatures you've grappled and letting you double grapple them, which will make both you and them restrained. Remember, attacks against restrained creatures have advantage, they have disadvantage on their attack rolls and dexterity saves, and they can't move. But with a grappler feat, you have advantage on your attacks against a creature that's grappled, so it's neutral for you in that regard. Bump your strength and your wisdom with your two free points, take stealth for your skill of choice, and the guild artisan background for insight and persuasion skills, and brewer supplies, because after a long day of dismantling evil corporate entities, sometimes it's nice to crack open a cold one. Let's talk about this build and Thursday's build, which are both characters from Final Fantasy VII. First, there's not a lot of remake footage that I can use because the remake isn't out yet. Second, Final Fantasy VII is a huge game with a ton of customization options to use on your characters, so it's kind of tricky to nail down what a canon Tifa is. I'm going to be using Advent Children and, honestly, Kingdom Hearts as the canon, so all that materia you can plug in I'll be categorizing as magical items from your DM. We'll be doing similar things for our future Final Fantasy characters, so for the poll options from Final Fantasy X, we're not cracking open the whole sphere grid for everybody, just focusing on the abilities the character is best at. So for this build, we're going to kick things off as a fighter. They have better hit die and can punch things harder at lower levels than monks thanks to some unearthed arcana. More on that in a bit. First, you get to grab two skills from the fighter list. Athletics and acrobatics are going to be my picks because you are strong and you are fast. Now onto that unearthed arcana. Class feature variants added some fighting styles. The one I've been using all the time here is unarmed fighting, which lets you make unarmed attacks that deal 1d6 one-handed or 1d8 two-handed. You can deal 1d4 damage to creatures when you grapple them and add that damage to attacks against them on follow-up turns. Does this mean Monk is dead? No, it doesn't. Monks get so many other things that fighters don't, and we'll talk about a bunch of them later because, spoiler alert, Tifa's gonna get some Monk levels. But first, you get second wind, letting you heal 1d10 plus your fighter level as a bonus action once per short rest. Tifa is in good enough shape to keep up with a god clone, or like a clone of a guy with god juice pumped into him. I'm saying she's tenacious. Bounce over to Monk right away because Monk is still a good class even if fighters can punch now too, just like Wizard is still a good class when sorcerers exist. Monks get martial arts, letting you make an unarmed attack as a bonus action after you attack with a monk weapon or your fist because let's be real, Tifa's hands are just as weapony as Barrett's. Of course, you do have to be not wearing armor to use martial arts, but that's cool because monks get tank top defense. There's a typo in the player's handbook that says unarmored defense for some reason. This makes your AC 10 plus your wisdom and dexterity modifier while you're not wearing armor, which is the same as studded leather at this point, but you basically have two attacks per round with a D8 damage die at level two. This is a good combo, trust me. Second level monks get key points, which you can spend to do cool stuff as a bonus action. Stuff like Flurry of Blows, which is really good for you, letting you make two unarmed attacks instead of one as a bonus action. If you grapple someone, you'll have advantage to hit with three attacks in a round and deal 1d6 plus 1d4 plus three bludgeoning damage each time. That's basically a glaive and two extra attacks, so the DPS of an 11th level fighter at total 
level three. If hitting like a damn truck isn't your thing, maybe you'd like to use patient defense to dodge as a bonus action, giving your enemies disadvantage on their attack rolls against you and you have advantage on dexterity saving throws. This could be useful to counteract the effects of your pinning restraint. But maybe that isn't up your alley either and you just want to outrun motorcycles. Step of the Wind lets you dash or disengage as a bonus action and doubles your jump distance for the round. Since this is a strong, your jumping distance was already pretty great, you'll go even faster if you're wearing your gender-swapped Mario cosplay thanks to unarmored movement, which makes you faster in overalls and scales up with your levels in Monk. Third level Monks can deflect missiles, letting you reduce the damage from ranged attacks by 1d10 plus your dexterity modifier and Monk level, and if you drop the damage to zero, you can throw the ammo back as a Monk weapon if you're willing to spend a key point. Bullets hurt, and a lot of Shinra's mechs have bullets, so hit them with the power of no you. You can also choose a monastic tradition. Open hand monks get the open hand technique, which lets you make your flurry of blows even better. You can force a dexterity saving throw of eight plus your wisdom modifier and proficiency bonus, knocking the enemy prone if they fail. Force a strength save to push them back 15 feet or force no saving throw and just stop them from taking reactions. Weirdly enough, I think that's the one that works best for you as getting advantage on attacks against a prone enemy isn't better than the advantage you'd get on a grappled enemy from grappler and pushing an enemy 15 feet away could be situationally useful, but your best bet is to just hold them steady. Fourth level monks get an ability score improvement. Let's keep the strength train rolling so you have the strength to flatten foes like a literal train. You also get slow fall, which reduces falling damage by five times your monk level as a reaction. Final Fantasy VII has a lot of anime energy, and that means jumping off buildings is the equivalent of jumping off of your coffee table at home. No one's breaking any bones from that. Fifth level monks get extra attack, letting you make two unarmed attacks instead of one as an action, not counting two more with your flurry of blows. You also get stunning strike, letting you spend a key point to force a constitution saving throw on a creature you hit with a melee attack. Failing that, they're stunned until the end of your next turn. Honestly, save your key points for flurry of blows. Grappling is your best tool for consistent damage and advantage. Your martial arts die bumps up to a d6, but you're just kicking and punching people anyway, so the unarmed fighting style is kind of taking care of that already. This really only applies to deflected missiles. Sixth level monks get key empowered strikes, making your unarmed attacks magical in terms of overcoming resistances. Tifa rips through metal like tissue paper and tissue paper like... Well, it was already tissue paper. It's not going to get much easier. Maybe a magical dolphin shows up on your kick. I don't know. Open hand monks get some more recovery as well, thanks to wholeness of body, letting you spend an action to recover HP equal to three times your monk level. I can't come up with a good joke for wholeness of body relating to Tifa that won't get this video demonetized. Seventh level monks get evasion, letting you take half damage from a failed deck save and no damage from a successful one. This pairs great with your restraining ability as you're kind of okay just tanking through a fireball with this, especially if you're using patient defense first. You also get still of mind, letting you remove an effect of charming or frightening as an action, taking on a monopolistic power company isn't for the faint of heart. Eighth level monks get another ability score improvement and you can cap your strength, meaning that you've also got a capped athletic score, which means that your grapples are the best they can possibly be. Though, keep in mind you still can't grapple anything larger than the large size. A mnemonic device to remember that is if they're under 10 feet, you may yeet. And that's enough of that. Let's get back to being strong. Second level fighters get action surge, letting you make two actions in the same round, once per short rest, for a maximum of six attacks in the same round. Forget seventh heaven, you'll be sending them to the first one because they died. Third level fighters can choose a martial archetype, and while it would be awesome to be a rune knight so that we could get large and grapple bigger foes, it's not really in character. Champion is also fun, though. It improves your critical hit chances with improved critical. That means that you crit when you roll a 19 on attack rolls as well as a 20, and since you can basically give yourself advantage on attack rolls against everyone shorter than a basketball hoop, you'll be getting a lot of crits. It's fun. Fourth level fighters get an ability score improvement. If you were power building, wisdom would be the best investment as it would increase your AC and your monk save DC, but we don't power build here, so invest in dexterity instead. It's really not that bad. Remember, your monk DC is basically just methods of giving you advantage on attack rolls, which you can already do with grappling, so it's fine. Fifth level fighters get nothing. Extra attacks don't stack until you hit the 11th level fighter. All the original extra attacks don't want to play with each other. So why go this far into fighter then? Well, as I mentioned, at 11th level, we'll get another extra attack. We'll also get way more ability score improvements. Speaking of, 6th level fighters get an ability score improvement. More dexterity is important to be as fast as we are strong. 7th level champions are remarkable athletes, letting you add half your proficiency bonus to any strength, dexterity, constitution check you're not proficient with, which basically just means sleight of hand at this point. You can also add your strength modifier to the distance of a running long jump, so with Step of the Wind, your maximum horizontal jump distance is 50 feet. That's the anime jump Nomura is known for. 8th level fighters get another ability score improvement. 
movement to cap off your dexterity. So if you want to use your punches or kicks with dexterity, you can do that. I don't really know why you would. It doesn't make any difference. Ninth level fighters get indomitable, letting you reroll a failed saving throw once per long rest. And keep in mind, you can use these on death saving throws as well in case one of your buddies is a little slow getting that phoenix down out. 10th level champions learn another fighting style. I might grab superior technique to grab a d6 superiority die and a maneuver from the battle master style. Pushing attack forces a strength save of eight plus your proficiency bonus and strength modifier, pushing a target back 15 feet if they fail. So if you want, you can knock someone 15 feet with this, then 15 feet with your flurry of blows for 30 feet in one round. That's enough to knock someone into next week, which is actually nice of you. The remake will be out by then. 11th level fighters get another extra attack, letting you make three attacks with your action, six attacks, when you surge and eight attacks when you flurry after that for 8d4 plus 8d6 plus 40 damage if you've grappled someone and just keep dropping them in a meteorific way our capstone is the 12th level fighter and we could bump up our wisdom for better ac but i'm gonna recommend the tough feat for an extra 40 hp at this level to help mitigate our low constitution so we can keep hoarding those potions now that we've hit level 20 let's figure out how viable this build is first you're incredibly low maintenance you can deal great damage with no weapons you don't need armor for good ac you're just ready to go at any moment your attacks are also magical, so robots and goddess clones shouldn't be an issue. Finally, you're mobile, with insane jumping distance thanks to a capped off strength and step of the wind. For weaknesses, grappling only works on creatures of larger or smaller, and lots of endgame fights are bigger, sometimes much bigger. Your monk DC is also pretty darn low since we never got around to investing in that wisdom. Finally, your constitution and intelligence are low, and saving throws for the former are common. Saving throws for the latter can be brutal. But you've got other party members who can tank those. Your job is to hit hard and hold the enemy down. Grip it, rip it, and backflip it as long as the backflip ends in a kick that creates a crater. Just remember, you're not immortal. And if you're interested in cloud, that could be an issue. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, subscribe for more. We make two builds every week. I'm no meteorologist, but I think you can expect clouds on Thursday.